Hello and welcome to the Self-Recording Band Podcast. I am your host, Benedict Tyne, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Malcolm Owen Flood. How are you, Malcolm? Hello. I'm great, man. Things are going just swimmingly. How are things for you in lovely <laughs> Germany? <laughs> uh, it's been... It's better. <laughs> it was wild the last couple of days, to be honest, but it's it's better now. So, like, my personal situation is better. The overall situation in lovely Germany, not so much at the moment. Like, COVID is back full force. <laughs> Jeez. Worse than ever. But, um, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> like, but for me personally, uh, things are getting better. Um, yeah. The listeners won't know, but my son poked me in the eye <laughs> like a couple of days ago and I couldn't see uh, well for a couple of days. It seriously hurt my eye, but it's, it, it will all recover and <laughs> I cannot, my vision is back. <laughs> that is good. Yeah. When you sent me that voice message, you're like, and I can't see, you know, I was like, oh my God, this yep. is serious. <laughs> yep. And yeah, it was, it was the weekend and I, I went to the hospital and they couldn't do anything for me at the moment. So I had to wait and then go to the uh, whatever the English word for an eye doctor is. And he, he had a look at it on Monday and he was like, yeah, it's hurt, but I, it should be fine. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> optometrist. Optometrist, I think is the Probably. English word. Probably. I was up at like three in the morning today, so I <laughs> feel like a lot of what I say is going to be wildly false. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. Yeah, and then... That plus, um, which is very sad, on like on the weekend, our cat died. One of our cats, oh, so that was not that is not heartbreaking. Fun. Yeah, totally, totally. I still didn't don't realize it really because I wasn't there when it happened. And like, but yeah, it's that's shitty for sure. But yeah, it's all it will all get better. <laughs> Always does. Yes, exactly. Now, did you or your house recover from the flood? Yes. I mean, my vocal booth does not have nice, cool looking flooring anymore. That is, uh, that was a goner. Um, but otherwise, everything is good. However, we have a forecast for even worse rains. Um, oh, yeah. holy shit. <laughs> so, fingers crossed that is wrong. The weather is oft often wrong. So, I'm just going to optimistically assume that they are wrong about this too. And uh, we'll all be fine. <laughs> okay, yeah. so w when is this supposed to happen? Uh, this weekend. This week. Oh, yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We will see. But uh, yeah, it was wild. Like, the highways closed all over the province. Things got messed up. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Yep. Yeah, um, so I hope no more catastrophes. <laughs> <laughs> the next couple of weeks, at least for a while, the rest, please. The rest of the year, we can, yeah. we can get out of the year without yeah. any more of those. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That'd for be sure. great. Yeah, that would be super great. Now, before we dive into today's episode, I want to ask something from our audience. Like, I want to ask you, the listener, something that is really, really important for us. And we, we haven't asked it much in the past, and I think that was, our, that was absolutely our mistake. So here we go. If you like the show, if you get something out of it, if you enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. That's the number one most important thing you can do for us. Like just share it, get, share it with all your mus musician friends that are self-recording, post it on social, tag us, all that stuff. That's the number one thing. But then also, please, please go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes or your favorite podcast app, although the Apple apps are the most important place to do that, and give us a review, please like a five-star rating plus a text review. That would be super awesome. And I know we've asked that before. Not many people did it. We know that a lot of people listen to it and we get emails uh -huh. and messages all the time. So we know you enjoy it. You, just for some reason, you just didn't go there and give us a review. And probably the reason is because you think that someone else will do that anyway, so you don't have to. That is wrong because everybody thinks that and then no one gives us a review. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. There's a name for that. I can't remember what it is, but like, okay, yeah. here's a... a True story that I'm going to get wildly wrong, but <laughs> yeah. but this lady was being attacked by this dude with a knife, and she was screaming for help. And lights turned on; she'd been stabbed, and but like lights turned on, and people looked out the window to see what's going on. And the you know attacker retreated because saw lights. Everybody just assumed somebody else was calling the cops. Turned off their lights. He attacked again. Same thing happened. It happened three times. Nobody called the cops. That happened in the states somewhere. <laughs> Wild. 
That's so super that's wild. what we're comparing our podcast to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, now, that's... now realizing this is terrible, <laughs> I should not have used that as an example. <laughs> yeah, but it's like this is it, nothing like that. <laughs> no, no, not not at all. But but still, I get your point. It's called the, the, the what you described is the bystander effect. I think. Yes, that's um, it. <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah, that's all and we that, needed. <laughs> yeah, th- there's this book called uh, Influence. I think is the the name of the book where. Yeah. It's described in detail, but yeah, what happens is like when a lot of people, when everybody assumes that someone else will will take action, then nobody will take action. And I agree, it's a bad comparison, <laughs> but I get Sorry, the point. Everyone. I get the point. Um, so anyway, what I what, so please, please go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes or your favorite podcast app and just leave us a review and rate the show and what that does for us because I think also you might not realize why that is important it's not just because we like to see that it's because Apple will then show our show to more people so it helps us help more people like you it helps us reach more people which yeah is good for us all for the music community so other musicians will benefit from from you doing that and also the more people listen to the show and the more feedback we get the better our content gets so we just lo- we would just love to grow our audience obviously and you can be a part of that and and do that for us if you enjoy the show. And so, yeah, thank exactly. you. Exactly. Two things. We're a music podcast about recording yourself. So everybody that listens is a creative. And I would say that 99.9% of you have Apple devices based on that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe 99.8. And so you even if you listen on Spotify, where you can't review, just go to the Apple app, leave us a review. Number two Everybody loves the guest episodes we had and having reviews is the main way for us to get really badass guests. Um, luckily, yeah. we know a lot of badass people, so we've been able to get great guests on already. But if we want to reach outside of our like warm network, we need more reviews from you. So please, please, please go do it. Totally. I will give you the facts because I just opened up our podcast distribution hosting app and it tells us where people are listening, what, what people are listening on, like what which devices and stuff. So... The top app is Apple Podcasts. So you're right there, uh, Malcolm. The top device is an Apple iPhone. 58% of you listen on an Apple iPhone. Um, The top app is Apple Podcasts, followed by Spotify, followed by unknown Apple apps, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. but still Apple. So yeah, 58% of people on an iPhone. So you can absolutely go there and do that. And maybe you have a Mac or whatever, like just... There's no excuse (laughs) if you like the show. (laughs) So... Anyway, thank you, uh, and we will move on to with today's episode, I think. <laughs> yes. So, finally. this today, we are talking about, I would say, <laughs> it's a little weird, we, <laughs> we are talking about the problem with content like this, with podcasts like this, with YouTube, with books, like any type of, of educational content. We're, we're going to talk about what the problem is with that, or what, what can, could be, become a problem and there's a couple of reasons for that. We all love, like Malcolm and I, we both love to educate ourselves. We love to to learn and grow. We consume podcasts, books, courses, all that stuff all the time. But sometimes it would actually be better to limit our learning or our consumption of content and take action instead. So mm-hmm. consuming all that stuff can be a distraction or like a way to procrastinate for a lot of people. And while we obviously think that our podcast is helpful, we think that we should be very careful with how much we consume versus how much we create, basically. And I'd love to to be a person who creates more than 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 I consume. So, like, I'd love to create more than I consume. And I think that everybody should be like that. Like, if you're a creative, and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about why why it, it can be a problem if you learn too much or if you consume too much content and why and what you can do instead or yes. how you can use the content so that it actually moves the needle and it actually helps you achieve your goals. Yeah. Create more than you consume. That is like a powerful thing to think about. You and I, Benny, we create a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, like we we both do this podcast. We both have other podcasts respectively as well. We both, you know, produce or mix and master music out there as well. Some even some video content and stuff, not to mind social content. So we create a lot, but I would say we still consume more than we create personally each. So it, like that's a very hard job to fill. And now if you aren't doing all those things like us, that's fine. 
but it means that you should be doing a lot more producing of your music. Get like way more, way more out there. Try and balance that out much, much more. I hope that's hitting hard. Yes, 100% agreed. And also, so that, that is part of it, like, and, and part of what we're going to talk about today. Also, there are a couple more problems that I recently, um, that I've been talking about a lot lately when I was doing like coaching calls and, and talking one-on-one -on -one to people, when I realized that not only is it a can it be a distraction or procrastination thing, it can only it can also be this this weird thing where people just blindly adopt whatever people say in this content, like we or YouTubers or people in a book, and they just they just hear someone say something, and then they just assume that this is the truth, and they should always do it like that. So mm. the good part about that is that these people actually take action. So they hear something and they implement it most of the time when they tell me that. But so that's good. But that can also be become a problem if you implement stuff that's not the right thing to do, the right approach for your project, or in order for you right. to hit your goals. So, I had this like, the, yeah, the, this actually comes up pretty often in conversations. Like, I, I was talking to a friend of mine who what who was watching videos on guitar recording on YouTube from people that I respect and and the, I watch their content as well, and he saw people do certain use certain techniques and he was telling me about that and he asked why I don't do it that way and I'm like who said I don't do it that way yeah I've never seen you do this like you do it differently and I'm like sometimes I do it sometimes I don't depends on the project you know but like and he was like yeah but this person says that this is the way and what and it obviously sounds great like haven't you seen this video so why don't you do it and I'm like okay he, this is the problem like yeah. <laughs> I, I bet this person doesn't always do it that way as well it's just one thing he showed in this video and I realized that people assume when they see something like that that this is the way you should do it and this happens to us as well like a lot of people listening to our podcast have sent me messages where they say something like I know you typically don't recommend X, Y, but I still did it this time. Or they say, yes, yeah, stuff like that. And and that tells me that they think there's this one way that we think you should do things. And they feel weird about like when they do, when they do it differently. And I mm -hmm. want to tell you that it's totally fine to do it differently if it's the right approach for whatever you're working on. So even though we believe in what we say here, this is all not gospel and not something you should always do like this yeah. is super important to me so that's that's the whole point of this episode today i want to talk about all these things and yeah and, and maybe and hopefully give you some some alternatives some, some ways to to consume content but then also apply it the right way and like yeah i i have a couple of techniques for myself that i that i use to get the most out of the content that i consume it it takes experience um i would say like it's very natural when you're starting out because you don't have any alternative. You you hear you know how, how to set up overheads. So and so likes a spaced pair, and so that's what you do. You you don't really know have an alternative in your in your kind of bank of techniques to go from, and you try it. And until you get experienced, you might just be like, okay, well that sounds like it sounds. But until you try a different one, say an XY, and you know what that sounds like, now you have a comparison in your head. For like, okay, these are totally different vibes, totally dis different stereo images. Which one suits the project? Am I going that I'm going with? I I was totally guilty of this. My mentor was a hardcore X Y guy, it, and to be fair, it works like a charm in his room almost every time. And I, whenever I went to other studios, I just kind of kept rolling with X Y. Now I'm obsessed with a space pair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not to say you know I've definitely set up space pairs and been like mm, not working. We got to take those down, throw up an X Y, or or try something different. Like it comes with experience that you question what you hear rather than just being like, this is what I saw, you know? Um, yeah. Now what we're teaching and what everybody else is teaching is totally awesome. Like those are great techniques and great starting points. And that's what they should be. They should be, this is like an educated guess. It's always an educated guess. Yeah, it, absolutely. So yeah, I can totally relate to that. Like I've used so many things for so long without ever questioning them just because someone told me to. And so I, yeah, I get where you're coming from and it's totally, it's perfectly fine that, that it's, that this is the way you do things right now, but I, we'd love to challenge you to just try new things, to experiment, to be open for new, to new ideas and to not um, share 
information you got from somebody as like the number, like the, the only way to do things. That's because that just makes the problem worse. Like if somebody sees a video and then thinks that's the only way to do it, and then they share it with all, with everybody and they tell everybody that this is the only way, this makes, this just makes things worse. Like when you give someone right. advi advice, make sure you, you, you say it's, it's, a, it's, it's an idea, a suggestion. It's like a way to do it, but not necessarily the only way. So, right. okay. So, yeah, let, let, let's just start listing out the, like the quote unquote quote problems with content. So problem number one, you hear something and you think it's the only way. So we just talked about that. That is problem number one. Solution to that is I would, what I do is I have, I think it's called a commonplace book is what they called it back in the, in the day. It's like a, that's, that's been something people used for like, the, I don't know, centuries. In my case, it's an app. It's a note app that I use, but you can have like a, an actual book or a notepad or whatever. And whenever I hear something that I, whenever I learn something that I think is awesome and could work when I learn about a new technique or a new way of doing things or an idea, I just put it there. I have one place where I dump all of these ideas and they are sorted and in like categories and stuff. So whenever I encounter a certain situation, I have a number of ways to solve that problem in this commonplace book. So I can just open up that app and look for, I don't know, overhead miking mm. techniques, whatever. And then I have a list of things that I've learned that I can then try or that I can like evaluate and see like this could work for this pro project. Mm, this might not be the right approach for this project, but I don't forget about things I learned. So I take notes and I just put them there, but I don't have to store them in my head and I don't have right. to have only one solution, but I have, I have a, a variety of options that I can pick and choose from. And I do that with like everything in my life, basically. It's like whenever, even for things like whenever someone, when, when someone, like we even have something like that for our family. When someone recommends a movie to us and I just can't watch it right now or like I will write it down, I will put it inside a notes app and I'll have a list of movies that have been recommended to me. And when I, when we're at home and we want to watch a movie, I'll just open up that list and see whatever I want to watch today. And if I don't do that, I don't remember that recommendation. Same right. thing if I'm like, if I'm out somewhere and someone recommends a mic or a guitar or whatever music related thing, I just write it down for later. And I have this, I built this library of things that have been recommended to me, but I never think about it as like, this is the one thing, like the best movie ever, or the one guitar that I have to buy. It's just one recommendation. And if like multiple people recommend the same thing, that might be the next thing I'll try. You know, but but I have this this collection, this library of things that I can just open up and, and pick and choose. And some of it is in my head, of course, but other things I have to write down because I can't remember otherwise. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's amazing. That's great. Um, I feel like I love organization, and but I have to work hard at it. Where I feel like you love organization, and you're naturally super organized. <laughs> you are <laughs> such a pro. <laughs> I, I don't know. I've, I've become that. I think I wasn't like that at all. Like ask my uh, wife, okay. I was terrible at it. Like it, <laughs> it was year, years of work went into this. Now it's natural because I realized how much faster I am with a lot of things, and it's a lot of work when you begin organizing stuff like that. Right. But when it's all set up and you just make habits, like habits are the, the key. Like right. when you have to think about it and force yourself to do things like that, it's hard. But once it's, it becomes a habit, um, it's not hard at all. I just make sure that in every single jacket that I have, in my bag, in my car, everywhere, there's a little notebook and a pen. It's like everywhere so that I can write down things everywhere, basically. I always have my phone with me so I can always open up an app. You just right. have to make it easy. You just have to... If you have to look for a pen and paper, or if you have to install an app or log into something complicated, you just don't do it because that takes right. time. But if it's just one click of a button, or I just reach over here, grab a pen, and my notepad is right next to me, then it's super easy to just make a note. Um, mm. All you have to do is like build habits for that. But you okay. don't have to do it that way. All I'm all I'm saying is, if you can store it in your head, if you can. All I'm saying is like store these ideas somewhere. And then see them as ideas, possible solutions to a problem, but not the one way to do it. And always, when you see a YouTube video, when you listen to a podcast, when you read a book, think about the situation, the context in, in which the idea has been presented and, and ask yourself why they did it in that particular example, why it worked, and then check if it if it's the same sort of issue in your situation, because oftentimes it's not. Like if someone shows you a technique to, to set up like to dial in an, an amp and mic the cab for a high gain metal tone, it might not necessarily work for your blues 
record mm. that you're making or so like it could yeah. but you know that probably there's a different context and you should always keep that in mind yeah i i like that was going to be my next technique for uh, yeah organize your different techniques but then um i kind of call it like genre testing is when i'm thinking about what techniques i'm going to use or gear i'm going to use i think about what genre i'm like i'm actually working in and then that narrows down the list it's like a tag attached to the ideas in my head and as soon as i think metal um or, or rock that list gets smaller you know i'm not going to do like a, a four mic drum setup on a hard rock song that's not going to translate for me works like a charm if you're going for you know when the levee breaks kind of thing you can you can pull it off but uh for for a big rock song it's or like a heavy modern rock song it's not gonna not gonna go totally the same with guitars you know like Iron Man's guitar tone is the perfect guitar tone for that song would sound terrible if it was on clocks by Coldplay it'd just be the worst <laughs> yeah listenable <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah um so like everything is got to be filtered through the genre and that really helps you narrow down on like what actually is relevant and you can i th i think that's really easy to remember because you can think about where you learned it from especially if it's like a youtube video or a podcast like us like you know benny and i are both rock the umbrella rock guys you know like yeah. that wide umbrella of genres that's kind of where we live so our ideas translate to that stuff generally and and you know sometimes it can translate to other stuff but it's you know i wouldn't come looking at us for a bluegrass record it's probably the wrong place to be learning um Although I know we have a blue glass listener who's killing it. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I, yeah, keep keep going. I have to say something about that, but keep going. Yeah. yeah um. So so just like with YouTube videos, especially though, you can just like picture the person t telling you, and you're like, you know something about them. You can, you know, the long hair. You're like, oh yeah, that guy's into metal. I remember that. And so this is like a good metal guitar technique. Stuff like that, super helpful. Yes, totally. Yeah, I I completely agree with what you just said there. And yeah, no, like, no, bluegrass is not the thing that I work on all the time. But I, in my case, I think that as long as it's like band music or with acoustic mm -hmm. instruments, I can do a decent job, at least like helping you. And I can, I might not be the perfect per person to mix it. There, there are other people who are, who mix this sort of stuff all the time, but I can definitely help you. Uh, I could definitely help you get your recordings right and, and other things. And like we have a listener who's who does uh, bluegrass, at least one listener. Like we know him. It's Greg. He's awesome. He kills. He's killing it. And he, yeah, I've been on the phone with him a couple of times for coaching calls. And he's in the academy and all that. And he just, yeah, he's he's amazing. So, but you, you're right. Like even with him, when I talk to him, I say things like, "If this is what works for your genre and you know it better than I do, then." by all means, go for it. My suggestion would be try this and that, but always like let the genre guide your decisions, let your taste guide the decisions. So, so yeah, you, you, you're completely right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't show him or I wouldn't make him mic a cab the way I, I do with, with a metal band, of course. So mm -hmm. yeah, the genre is super important. Context is super important. It's everything. So <laughs> I, I know we've talked about this before, but it still drives me nuts. There was a video made by a very famous YouTube channel mm. about uh, using eight gauge strings and how they sound better than any other heavy ah, gauge of strings. And I know, possibly like the most damaging thing to hop happen to rock music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure live bands have sounded worse ever since. <laughs> yep. So <laughs> the the comparison was that like they're brighter, they're not really lacking in low end in comparison, and maybe that's true. In my experience, it's not usually the case, but maybe that's true. Um, now. People in the video happen to be world-class guitar players um, and musicians. And I mean, I consider myself, I, I, you know, I'm not like, like Steve Vai or something, but I'm like a world-class touring musician. Like I can go and tour and do the shit. And yeah. uh, I still grab chords out of tune all the time by accident and shit. Like it's, it's hard work recording really in tune guitars. Thank you, Evertune now. And yeah. if I had eights, there'd be no chance. There'd be no chance I could do it. If I practice really hard with eight gauge strings, I would eventually get it, but it'd still be really, really hard. And and so it's like this advice is like they sound better for me in this like no context situation. And then I the music store in town said that everybody was buying eights. Everybody. And it's like, okay, nobody in this town's good enough to play with eights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Oh no, this is a disaster. <laughs> for sure, for sure. 
Yeah, I know. I know the video you're talking about. I, I, we we don't have to say who it, who made it, but um, yeah, I've had conversations about that as well. And I, people get the funny thing is if you tell people, if I, if I offer my advice, then and and that's also part of the part of the whole problem is also that when somebody really famous or really like a big YouTuber it doesn't even have to be a, a famous producer or, or musician. If just if it's just a big YouTuber who says that it's very hard to convince people of something else or like to at mm. least try and make them think about it. Because what happened in this situation was I was like, people were tell, telling me about this video and I was offering my opinion and said like exactly what you just said, Malcolm. And then people really get, I, I noticed that people get defensive, even like I, I'm very polite when I say things like that. And like, it's just, ideas and and advice but you don't have to do what i say of course but if i offer my opinion then when i'm asked for it then people will become will get pretty defensive and also they they let me know that like this big guy said you got to do it that way and they don't take my advice as seriously as the other guys so i don't care about that like you can you can do whatever you want but that's just that's also part of the problem that just because these people reach a lot of people they have they seem to have some sort of authority and people will just follow blindly. And this is, yeah, th this is, this can be dangerous. It, like it always, it always is in all sorts of yeah ways. But what, what I'm trying to say is I think some of the most knowledgeable, some of the best producers out there are not like the loudest ones or the ones mm. who reach the most people, or some of them don't even do content at all. And if you'd ask them for their advice, they would give you very good advice probably they would look at it from different angles different perspectives but nobody hears these people all you hear is like the people who are reaching a lot of people who have big youtube channels podcasts whatever who are writing books and they are great of course and what they do is great but you just have to think about the context you always have to be open to other ideas as well and you should just file them in your brain or in an actual app or whatever or wherever as like options to solve a problem yep. totally. that that's it so, yeah I, i'm like that that channel we were mentioning i'm sure has a ton of great advice on that. absolutely um stuff that's, that's why just i don't want to awesome. talk shit about it yeah totally and and even that video is like it's not like they really did anything wrong in their no. test with his hands no nope. it sounded cool i guess and yeah. people thought they agreed with it um it's just, it's more so that the listeners didn't question it right and blindly followed it and didn't notice that now every time they play a chord it's awful <laughs> yeah exactly now okay so i think that, that that point is clear now just try to be open just try to question things and don't assume yep. that when you see something that people do do it like that all the time and it's not your fault by the way like sometimes these videos are made that you could think this is what they do every single time but i can assure you that even those people because they know what they do obviously they they are not idiots they they are great people and th their ideas are great and what they do works for them but i can assure you that they don't do it like that all the time like when some famous producer shows you a way to mic drums it's probably not what they do on every single session it's just the one thing they showed in this one video and that's always something you have to keep in mind yeah Actually, it's pretty safe to assume that if you're learning from one of the best in the world that they change it all the time because they are constant learners yes absolutely Okay, so problem number two, that is the one that I started this episode with, and that is that consuming content and learning is great, but if it distracts you and if it keeps you from actually taking action and like doing work and practicing and doing the exercises and putting in the effort that's necessary, stuff that will really move the needle, if it keeps you from doing that, you have to stop it or limit yourself. You can do like a yeah, you can, like, there's, people do it differently. Some people just stop for a while entirely and just try to, like, really focus on getting a project done for a couple of weeks without consuming anything. Other people just limit themselves to a certain amount. Or you just find a natural balance, whatever works for you. But, like, if you're not reaching your goals, like, if you set goals and you, you find that you don't get there you, you or you can't seem to make progress, just think about how you, like, take a look at how you spend your time and be brutally honest with yourself and mm -hmm. the 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 thing why like the reason why i'm saying this is that the obvious distractions or procrastinations are things like netflix or like stuff that is not music related like that's the number one thing that people look at when they when they look at their calendars their schedules and they try to find out 
why they don't get anywhere. So that that's the number one thing. But oftentimes people think they are very productive and they don't watch Netflix. They don't do a bunch of other crap. They think they spend all their time working on their music, but actually they're not working on their music. They spend a lot of time learning and consuming stuff, which feels productive and feels great. And you're building knowledge. But as long as you just building that long that knowledge and you don't take action, it doesn't change much for you. So you got to get to that point where you implement it and where you create more than you consume, as you said in the beginning. And so this, this is really super important. And I, as much as I love that that some of you have listened to all our now 94 episodes of this podcast, so I love that you do that. But if you ever like, if you if you if you ever have to make the decision of like record the idea I have right now or try this new thing that I want to try all the time or listen to another episode, please go and record that idea now or like work on the thing you wanted to work on and then go back and listen to the episode. So I don't want you to to listen to it because you think you need that first and and yeah, and just never get to the thing that actually needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah, try and practice just in time learning for sure. I heard a great quote recently and it was something like knowledge without action is ignorance, something crazy blunt like that. And I was like, oof. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I think I know, but I haven't done it. So I don't really know. That's a good point. I got to do more stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, you're totally right, Malcolm. Uh, I love that quote. And it's it's true. And yeah. I, I have, yeah, there's, there's one more problem okay. with YouTube channels, podcasts, books, and everything that is on our list today that I, I don't think is in our outline here. And okay. it's uh, endorsements. Oh yeah. And uh, now, this is tricky because uh, honestly, if if you're not very aware how the content marketing world works, at, at a certain point, and some people's entire platforms are based on affiliate marketing. So, or yeah, affiliate, which is where you get paid if somebody buys the thing, but sometimes you just get paid money to talk about something and promote it, and that doesn't always mean that they are lying. That actually, I would say most of the time, most integral people would be only willing to do the job if they actually liked it. And, but some people do, <laughs> yeah. you know, some, some people talk about stuff and say it's the bee's knees, but they don't even use it. It's just something that they, it's just a job. So just be aware of that. We definitely are not like that. I want you to know yes. we are very truthful humans. Um, and actually we don't even have anything that we promote. Do we? I mean, you got a, a affiliate like thing for some headphones i think but is there anything else um i got a couple of things that are like i have one affiliate um thing with room sound drum samples because but right. i like I, I bought them all before them? i yeah i bought them all before i got the the affiliate link so i bought every single one of their libraries with my own money and then i got the affiliate link and now i share it with people because it's what i really use in a lot of my productions and i just love them yep. and i will continue to buy whatever they they uh put out if it's as good as the ones that i have now so yep. That's one thing. I have an endorsement deal with a headphone company, Allo Audio from Slovenia, which they are great. You also own? Wait, <laughs> which, <laughs> like the company? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. You own the headphones. Like, yeah. like, like what I'm getting at is that uh, like, these are all, yeah. th these aren't jobs. These are like no. happenstances. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not even an, aff an affiliate thing. I can't buy and resell them in theory because I get a lower price. But mm. like, I have done that three or four times or so. I don't even promote it that hard. I, I, I will tell people that I love them and that I'm, it's not the ones that I'm wearing right now because these are closed and I use them because of the mic bleed, but the other ones, the allos are open and I love them for mixing, but I use them every day and I really, really love them and I really w would recommend them to everybody. So yeah, and then the other thing is Antelope. I don't have an endorsement deal yet. I don't, depends on when you listen to this, this show, but we're working on some, we have some partnership. That's all I can say. Um, they sent me stuff to try, and part of the reason why we haven't, we don't have an official deal yet, is because I want to try things first. I want to know if I really enjoy it. I want to know if it's like good enough for me to stand behind it and like um, recommend it to people. With this microphone, I already did because I enjoy it. I use it for every single podcast. It's great. I take it with me as a USB mic. I love it. I use it, so that's fine. But they've sent me other stuff, and I have to try it. And then when right. I've, and yeah, so yeah. Bottom line, yeah. we are not like that. If I ever make a piece of content about anything, you can be sure that I actually enjoy and use the thing. But this is not always the case. And sometimes it's not obvious. Sometimes people don't do like a promo or something. They just talk about a piece of gear and you might not know that they do it because it's their job. 
Yes. Now, a couple things on that point is, uh, yeah, they, there's people that do it because of their job. And that's what we're saying. Try and notice that and stay away from it. It's obviously not very like heartfelt advice. They don't, don't necessarily have your best interest at heart. Uh, but second, even if they like it and you like them, there's now a bias being created. You should question it. Even though you naturally think Benny's got a really great sounding voice when you listen to this podcast and that mic sounds great, doesn't mean it's going to be great for you. It probably, it's a I mean, it's great mic, be fine. But uh, like, that's a bad example. But essentially, what I'm saying is that you're naturally, if you enjoy the content, like if you're watching a channel all the time, you're going to naturally like what they like and, and just by association think it's the right thing for you. And you should question that. True. Absolutely true. I haven't even thought about that problem, but that is a, tr a true problem. Um, mm -hmm. There are, <laughs> I've seen really crappy products being promoted by a bunch of people where I was like, why? Like, how? <laughs> but yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's a job. So yeah, uh, be careful there. All right. Yeah. Now, the thing with the, the whole procrastination thing, um, to get back to that real quick, what you can do there is, as I said, like limit your time, try to, to create more than you consume. And uh, you, you mentioned just-in-time learning and just-in-time education or learning means that you only learn or consume things you need right now to solve a specific problem. Like when you know you are in songwriting mode and you constantly like hit writer's block or you just can't come up with something you really stoked on, you got to educate yourself. You got to do things. You got to find ways to overcome that. And then education is obviously awesome, but it won't help much if you if you read a book on mixing when you're in that phase, right? So you should consume the right um, content. And once you have your answers or possible answers, possible ways to solve your problem, you should stop and implement what you've learned and see whether or not it works. And only mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, you can like come back and learn more, but always try to actually implement the stuff you're learning. So if you're honest, like if you consume and even if you do that, even if you consume the right type of content, there's usually so much in like a single YouTube video, if it's well-made or in a single podcast episode or in a book that you read, that it's going to be very hard to implement all of these things, like to even remember all the things and then implement them. So you'll have plenty of actionables after just watching one piece of content or listening to one podcast or reading one book. And before you move on to the next, you should try the things you just learned or just write them down for later. But like make sure you make good use of it. Because if you think about it, um, the amount of time you put into that, like think about how long it takes you to read a book, a good book. That's a serious investment. You could spend time with your family. You could spend time making music. You could spend time with your friends. You could do all sorts of things instead of reading that book. Why would you read that book if you don't take any of the things in that book and actually try them and implement them and like, yeah, and, and, and improve something with it? Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, if you just put in the time, but you don't implement, then it's just because then you read the book just for the sake of reading. And that could be fun. And I like reading too, but just be honest to yourself. Like if that's what you, how you want to spend your time, if you just want to read because you want to read, then cool. But if you think it's productive and it helps you make better music, probably not. Like you have to think about why you're actually doing this. And if the investment is really worth it, the, like the time investment, and if it actually moves the needle. And that's been so true for myself. Like I read all the time. I, I, I read books and listen to audiobooks and listen to podcasts and take courses and all of that. And for the longest time, I moved on to the next thing without implementing, like I, I maybe implemented 20, 30% of whatever I learned in the last thing at best. And now I'm way slower with reading. It takes me much more time now to read a book, but only because... As I go through the book, I try to, to take the stuff that I need right now and implement it right away. And that might mean that I can't finish a book in like two weeks, but it might take me six weeks or even longer. But during these those six weeks, I take as many things out of this book as I can and actually put it to action and see if it works. So Right. Yeah, those results are going to be infinitely better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. So yeah, th that's one thing. Action and like the right, the right ratio there. And then there's another thing. I think for some people, consuming more content, even if you take action, will not get you to the results you're trying to achieve, will not help you achieve your goals anymore. You might be at a point where you've consumed so much, you've learned so much, you might know all the things, but you just can't connect the dots. You just, you know it, you've implemented the stuff, you've tried it, but you just still don't know which of the things are the right things to do or 
what the right approach in, in that situation you're in right now, what the right approach is for that, you might need feedback or you might need accountability. You might need someone who actually like guides you through this or who actually makes you do the right things, who helps you make decisions on what the right thing is. That's the whole reason why I, for example, I hired coaches for all sorts of things. Like I hired a business coach to help me with my with my businesses. I did that like I did that three times actually with different mm -hmm. people. When you want to hit like when you want to hit a certain fitness or health goal, you hire a personal trainer or a coach in sports or whatever, or you you get someone to make you a, an exercise plan, a training plan, join or a something. Team. Join a team, yeah, something, mm -hmm. something like that. You don't just read books and then you try to learn. I mean, some people do, but you get much better results if you have an expert guiding you, coaching you. So yeah. it might be that another course or another book or another video is not what you need. And if, even if you take action, it will not give you the results you want unless you get like accountability, feedback, personal guidance, and an outside perspective. So if that's yeah. you, and that's not the, the point of this episode, but I want to put it out there, of course. If that's you, that's exactly why I've launched my coaching project uh, pro program as well. So if you are that person and listening to another 93 or four of our episodes here, won't change much for you, then maybe reach out, go to the selfrecordingband.com slash call and book a coaching call with me and see if that is what you need to do right now. If you want to move your, your whole music career forwards, or if you want to make that record you've always wanted to make. So maybe coaching is the right thing. That's why I'm offering it. And yeah. 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 I, I, you just said something, you said episode 94 and I was like, right, this is our 94th episode without missing a week. It's crazy. And if you're listening to this and you haven't taken action yet, book that call with Benny. It's a no-brainer. It's like you you need somebody to help you get over the next little like hump in the road, you know? That that's just such a good call. You know, our Facebook community is a good kind of accountability yeah. thing as well and a good place to experiment and bounce things off of like, you know, ideas off other people. Benny and I, you you and I met in a mastermind group, which with the idea of you know, brainstorming and keeping each other accountable as well. That's another good thing. I think a lot of the reason people start bands is for that reason. It's easier as a team, right? <laughs> it's easier with other people working towards the same goal um, as you. So like, that's a form of, of this as well. So hiring Benny as a, a coach is just like, now you've got somebody in your corner helping you like navigate this long learning road. For sure, definitely. For me, I should have done this when I started out my audio engineering career. For sure, we've talked about that. I didn't do that. I, I didn't. I didn't pay a coach or or get a, a proper mentor or anything like that because there was nobody close to me, and I didn't know about. I didn't know. I don't know if, if like online coaching programs like that existed even back then. But I mm. could have certainly reached out to people and just pay for the time and, and let me let them mentor or guide me or coach me. And I should have done that. The way I did it was I hired other people to mix my music. And I've learned from listening to what they've done with my recordings. I've asked a ton of questions. I was super annoying to people. <laughs> and I yeah. tried to to just get as much like personal feedback and guidance from people as I could. And luckily, a lot of those people were kind enough to, to do that and to offer me the advice. But it would have gone much quicker and I could have accelerated the whole progress so much if I would just, if I would have just reached out to certain people and, and like, let them guide me, let them coach me. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a, a stigma in music, like just learning music where like, you know, going to music school or taking lessons is sometimes thought of as like, uh, a, like the wrong path to take. Um, and then with becoming a recording engineer, getting an education, like by going to a university to learn recording arts or something is generally thought to be a terrible idea. And, and I, like, honestly, I usually tell people the same. <laughs> I'm like, I yeah. don't think that's the path to take, but that gets misconceived as education is not necessary. And that is like, that couldn't be further from what I believe. Yeah. Education is mandatory. It is absolutely mandatory. Yeah. And the, the phrase self-taught is just like utter bullshit. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Nobody's self-taught. You just learn from other things. That's all. You know, yeah. I, I just finished Dave Grohl's book. Amazing. Highly recommend it. One of my favorite audiobooks ever. But he... he says a few times that he's self-taught. It's like, no, you just learned from other people. You like, you learned watching your favorite musicians. You learned from playing with other musicians. Like you, you still are absorbing information from other sources. Nobody's just 
got it in them. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, it, it couldn't be more true with what we're doing here as well. You know, we're trying to teach you through a podcast and, and really we can plant ideas, but you still have to, there's still way more like steps involved in the, in the like implementing and having this knowledge become part of who you are and your skill set. Totally. And that was actually a perfect example with the audio school thing that you just mentioned, because the difference between audio school and like mentoring, coaching, taking online courses from the right people, reaching out to to professionals and, and, and ask for advice. The difference between that is that often, not, not all the time, I can't speak about all those people, but oftentimes with audio schools or like universities and stuff like that, you, the people teaching the stuff there, they have not done it in reality. They have not done it themselves or they haven't done it in a long time. And they're teaching you uh, a curriculum, a way to do things, which it, like sort of, um, yeah, is, is what we've talked about earlier in this episode. They're teaching you one way of doing things. They are not teaching you what it's like to do it in the real world, like what it's like to, to be a part of the industry. They often are like behind the curve. Like they, they don't know, like a university or a school like that can never adapt quickly to when things change in the industry. So you might learn stuff that's not relevant anymore. So usually you're just better off education is important, but you're just better off talking to people and seeking advice from people who are actually doing what mm -hmm. they talk about, what they teach. And the same can be said for some YouTubers or even book authors. There are great ones out there, obviously, but there are also some who, what they're saying is not wrong, but they haven't made a record in a long time. All they do is like make YouTube videos and experiment on their own. And again, what they say might not be wrong, but it might be a little different from what from how records are actually made. Right. And and yeah, just keep that in mind. It's not true for everybody, but just make sure you ask the right people for advice. And the education is super important, but don't waste your time with the wrong information. That's what we're trying to say here, basically. Yeah, education's just gotten better. It's changed and and it took us a while to realize that like these alternative forms of education are actually education. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what they are. They're just new forms of education that in my mind are just like far superior to what, what existed previously. Totally, totally. That's it's a whole like knowledge revolution going on now and it will takes it will still be a while until like most people will catch up and really mm -hmm. realize that this that it is that way, but like to be honest, in in some niches in some fields of work like it, it's already there. It's already happening. People without degrees are yeah. like doing things faster, quicker, better than people spending a lot of time with like the, the way you, things used to be. But that's not true for every industry, so I don't want to talk further about that. But just just think about the possibility and like question when question everything you see and, and yeah. Yeah. Make the right decisions for your situation. With you. All right. I think that's plenty for this for this topic. So please keep listening to this podcast because we think it's relevant, but only if you also do what we talk about here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> only. And also, uh, we mentioned it in this episode, 94 episodes. Very stoked on that. Leave us a damn review. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially after you've implemented what we talked about. That's actually the best thing. Like, pick your favorite episode, implement what you've learned, and then leave us rev a review telling us how it improved your recordings. That would be the no, best. No, no, you're setting too many barriers. Leave us a review, implement, and then come back, edit your review. You want that review? <laughs> <laughs> okay, with you. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. Awesome. All right. Thank you for being a listener. Um, and yeah, see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.